So another day, and today quite a big one, huh? We hear all of Biden is going to address the American people on the Ukraine war. Oh my God, how's that going to go? So I wonder what he's going to tell them. I mean, first of all, I suppose he'd be apologizing for sanctions hurting the world, although it hasn't hurt America that much yet, has it? Well, I mean, it has, but anyway. But uh, um, for sanctions hurting the world, the Western world, a hell of a lot worse than it's hurt, hurt Russia, especially considering the fact that money from European oil is actually financing the war. And the reason that sanctions are not working is because the rest of the world seems to like Russia more than they like America. I mean, and pretty obvious why. I mean, since the Second World War, America became the self-proclaimed protector of the rights of man on planet Earth. And then it became a bit shit, well, a few years later, I mean, what, in about the 1980s or 90s or early 2000s, I can't remember, when they passed, what was it, the Balfour Declaration or some declaration, which said, no, on this planet there will only be the United States as a superpower. There will be no other superpowers. America will make sure that the world is adheres to principles of value, Christianity, and democracy. Well, this is what they did, didn't they? They ran around and started selling democracy all over the world. Now, the rest of the world didn't know what the fuck democracy was. I mean, hey, it sounded all wonderful. I mean, but they'd never had it. It's like us, you having, uh, uh, you know, cooking your whole life and you never had a food processor. And then you get a food processor, gosh, you think you couldn't live without it. But before you noticed you didn't have it, you didn't really give a shit. You got on and did whatever you had to do any other way you could. And it's the same. People didn't miss democracy until it arrived. And then now they're looking back and they see the countries that have actually received or been converted to democracy, the same as Christianity, are bloody disaster zones. So would you like democracy? No, no, no. no. I tell you what, take it somewhere else. So Biden's going to have to swing this thing. And... That's why Americans are not, are not liked so much. They're not liked by the rest of the world, by Africa. I mean, if you ever have, have a look which way it swing, Asia, we know it's not going to go with the States or NATO. Uh, Africa, well, it's got a long, tired history of colonialism. So the chances are them trusting Europe would be very, very slim. And, of course, America coming in and... It's a whole, you know, humanitarian thing and changing democracy. I can never wonder why people in countries that have got resources or value adds, those people deserve humanitarian aid better than these poor destitute fuckers living in places that are falling apart. I suppose there must be sense in that somewhere. But I seem to, it just evades me. But anyway, that's a sign of I mean, Somalia, busy, a million people are going to die of starvation. That's a fact. In the next year. And Ukraine, we know what's happening in Ukraine. But I mean, there the civilian, the civil rights of these people are, are, uh, are you know, they enshrined. I agree. I mean, it's, I'm not justifying the war, I mean, for God's sake. You know, do I like what Putin's doing? No. But I do, I respect him sticking to his guns and not flip flopping like the West does. Yeah, I do. He turns around and says, hey, you do this, I will murder you. So what, they do that, he comes and murders you. Look at what's happening with Finland and Sweden at the moment. I mean, I don't know what's going on in their heads because NATO's got no teeth, as we see. United Nations has fallen off the planet. I see they're doing a sort of a comeback now and they're wanting to go and see Putin and they're wanting in Moscow and they're wanting to go and see Zelensky in, uh, um, in Kiev. And they're trying to recover because why? Because the Governor General got sent a letter by 200 delegates in the United Nations that says, get your shit together because we're busy falling off the block, which means we will not have jobs, I suppose. So they're trying to do, but NATO, they are putting up arms, I suppose they have. While they've been telling us, no, we must come arms, they've been piling up weapons and piling up on the Eastern Front. And they're ready for this war. And Biden is probably going to tell them, well, guess what, folks, we're all going to war. 
uh, in some way, I don't know how he's going to swing it, but because, you know, as I say, I don't think the American people like it. They like hamburgers, and they don't like this war. I mean, they're, since 1949, I read somewhere else, that with the best army and 10 times the more spend, military spend, then the next 10 contenders for the top position as military big guns combined, and they still haven't won a war since the Second World War. It's quite incredible that, and not one war. It's quite amazing. But uh, um, shame. I mean, I'm not gunning them. I just I feel sorry for America. I feel sorry. It's hard when you're the town bully and all of a sudden, you know, the other towner comes along and kicks your ass or is threatening to and you don't want to hit back in case he's, he does. So they are all setting up for, for NATO, setting up for going into things. I think everyone would realize that's why Biden's going to make the speech, that this thing is pulling all of the players in. So Finland and Sweden are going to think, oh, bad move, I mean, because that puts them on the border of Scandinavia. Meanwhile, China has just tested a new hypersonic ballistic missile, not intercontinental, probably only about 1,000, 1,500 kilometers. Shame. So it's got a stress off thing, but it's made for taking out aircraft carriers, apparently. And uh, uh, Russia has just tested its new hypersonic intercontinental ballistic missile capable of carrying six nuclear no warheads. Now, NATO, the um, Russia and America, uh, Russia and China are the only countries, if after this test of China, with hypersonic weaponry. NATO has not got America as equal. Yeah, it's terrible. So it's these two guys that are taking these big guns, these guys have got the hypersonic weapons, they got the oil, they got the food, they're stopping the food getting out of Ukraine. Ukraine is complaining, obviously, about the food. The whole world's going to starve, and it's true. But they're still not coming up with a deal on how to fight this thing or deal with, with, with Putin. Putin said, yeah, he wants to liberate um, Donas, uh, the Donbass region and pretty much happening, shame, Mariupol, but Mariupol as well. Interesting development there just in the last few minutes is that Putin said he's not going to go and raid them and dig them out of their, their little tunnels in their, their steel plant. He's going to barricade them, blockade them, stop them from getting any kind of anything in or out. That will be water, food and armaments, weapons and uh, uh, ammunition. He's got all the time in the world. Doesn't have to lose a man. He just sits there. And is it the humane way? Well, it depends on the guys inside. You know, it's giving them a chance. It's given them three chances to get out, and they've said, no, 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 they're sticking. And I can understand why they're sticking, because, my God, I don't think they're going to be treated really well coming out, especially the soldiers. But it's a war, for fuck's sakes. This is a war. He's declared whether it's a special mission or whatever, it's still a war. And if we are looking at it from the thing, is to say, okay, is he going to back off? He's not going to back off. He can't. He's in a corner. Uh, if he turns around and backs off, your face firing squad, or you'll be, you'll be uh, executed. Well, that's what it would have to happen if they ever brought him to trial. But that's the thing. Russia apparently has a very uh, already announced the Third World War has started. That's interesting, eh? That they are on news, which is a state owned. They broadcast to get ready for the long haul. And we look at the, the strategy, I mean, everyone says, oh, he came in and he fought Kiev, and he came and he got pushed back, and but he took a couple of towns and stuff like that, but now the armies, and I'm not belittling uh, uh, Ukraine, it's just somehow these people, I don't understand, they ride at the coalface and they've seen this, that he came in, hit from the north, hit from uh, uh, Crimea, came in and had opportunity takeovers. He had a great opportunity to go and take over some areas through speed and haste and small resistance. And it gave him a good assessment of the lay of the land. Now he pulls back and now it's a systematic choke for it. I heard a Russian co common, uh, co uh, uh, news dude, uh, uh, journalist, who said that, no, the 9th of May is not a big deal. I mean, it's, yes, it is a nice target, but they know this is going into the autumn campaign or the summer campaign. That, uh, uh, you know... This is, it's going to be a summer campaign. And that's why I said in my first video that he probably raided at the end of their uh, winter because it gave him a six months to take this thing and to get sorted out and to be strategically located for it next winter. And coming in the second winter, great to repel, difficult to fight. So I, I think his strategy is just a lot more, a lot more sophisticated than he's been given credence for.
And as I say, having China in his back, China again this morning and says, no, 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 no. He doesn't want to turn around. They, they don't think the sanction thing is working. This unilateral sanction, they want peace and stuff. But it was a sort of backhand threat and they turned around and they testing missiles and they chunking up their army for the last few years because they are scared of NATO as well. They say, hey, hold it. These guys are getting very aggressive. They are pushing forward. He's, China is starting to get scared. Now, if China's making noises like that, do we honestly think China's scared? Yeah. Do we think that he's actually posturing for possible later involvement if he ever gets pulled in? They're very, very clever. Xi Jinping's not a stupid man at all. You don't run a country that big by being dwarf, especially strategically or tactically dwarf. So he's hedging his bets there. Russia is still turning around. They got both of them have got big missiles. America and them are going, oh, we're gonna fight back, but we're gonna fight with gloves. Meanwhile, they're facing machine guns. Um, yeah, this needs to be taken on different things and, and but it has to be fought, eh?